The year is 1592, and Hideyoshi is understood to be the most powerful man in Japan. And for all intents and purposes, he is the leader. But he's not the shogun, because he can't be. Because he comes from a peasant background and not a samurai background. And therefore, the emperor will not recognize his authority. So, what is an all powerful ruler to do? Well, first, he decides to set up a castle in Osaka. And this move is strategic because it puts him really close to Kyoto, where his new best friend lives, the emperor. His plan? He's going to buddy up to the emperor in order to gain his favor and hopefully change his mind about the whole needs to be a samurai with imperial ancestry role. He spends a bunch of money on ceremonies, rebuilds the imperial palace, and even takes the emperor out on fancy trips to watch no theater. Which, by the way, he also decides to write and perform in, particularly so he could tell the story about how he's a descendant of the sun goddess Amaterasu. Since we all know that theater is the best way to prove you're eligible for that job you want. When this doesn't work, he changes his name to Toyotomi Hideyoshi and gives himself a new title, which the emperor bestows upon him, called Taiko, which in his mind is higher than the title of shogun. But none of that makes him feel better. So what's the next best thing that someone of his position would do? He decides to invade Korea. If he can't make himself the top man of Japan, he's going to make Japan the top country in Asia, or something like that. Essentially, he needs to legitimize his role somehow. And since he needs something that doesn't involve the emperor, in his mind, this is the next best thing that he could do. Others have also suggested that perhaps his power got to his head. And since he had been successful in Japan in every battle that he had fought in, he felt that nothing could prevent his success fighting outside of Japan. But if that is the case, then Hideyoshi was wrong, very wrong. The invasion of Korea is a large scale event that requires the participation of nearly all of his closest allies. In 1592, he attacks Korea for the first time. And in the beginning, his army does do pretty well. But then the Korean army mounts a strong naval defense, resulting in a stalemate and an eventual truce in 1596. Hideyoshi uses the next year or so as a time to regroup and then launches a second invasion in 1597. But this time, China has become a bit wary of Hideyoshi and Japan. Recognizing that if Hideyoshi is successful and does conquer Korea, China is most likely the next place that he's going to go. So China supports Korea, and this time the combined forces is too strong for Hideyoshi. And it leads again to another stalemate. In the end, Hideyoshi dies from natural causes in 1598. And by this point, it's clear that not only is Hideyoshi unable to become the shogun, his dreams of conquering Korea and making Japan the leader of Asia also die as well. But the most consequential impact of these invasions is what happens after the death of Hideyoshi. It's because his allies fought on his behalf that they are left in a weakened state in his absence. This leaves them vulnerable and open to be taken over by another powerful figure. Perhaps someone whose allies are as strong as ever and ready to fight alongside him. This man is Tokugawa Ieyasu. In our next video, we'll talk more about Tokugawa Ieyasu and how he uses this as an opportunity to exert
exert his influence and eventually become the shogun of a new unified Japan.